Welcome to our first lecture for Composing with Sound, entitled Composing with Sounds, Composing Sound, and Introduction. In the lecture, we hope to introduce the concepts of composing with sound and to provide a clear overview of the assessment structure and the learning activities in the subject. I want to get you to start thinking about sound as a material to compose with uh, as well as a material that you will compose. And it's this relationship between composing with sound and composing sound that we'll be dealing with throughout the semester. The tool that we're going to be using for this is software called Max MSP, and you'll be learning about that software and learning how to use it as we move through the semester. There's a really great textbook uh, called Electronic Music and Sound Design Theory and Practice with Max MSP, written by Cipriani and Giri. And in that text, uh, the authors say, one might say that while the traditional composer working with traditional instruments composes using sounds, the electronic composer composes the sounds themselves. And so this is the world we're going to explore uh, of electronic music and both coming up with compositional structures, sequences of sound material, but also finding new and interesting ways to compose the sounds themselves, to synthesize the sounds themselves, rather than relying on uh, ready-made sounds from instruments that we know about, guitars, pianos, and so forth. This approach to making music goes back a long way, and one interesting starting point is with the German composer Karl-Heinz Stockhausen, who lived from 1928 to 2007. When he first started working in electronic music, he was, he was studying uh, phonemics, the uh, science of speech and speech sounds. And he learnt uh, about the physics of how speech sounds were created, and he learnt that you could create a complex sound, like a vowel sound, uh, by building up the sound from the most basic sound components, which... Uh, from a sound, which from a scientific point of view are what are known as sine waves, and we'll learn more about these as we go along. And this uh, piece, Study 2, that was composed in 1954, uses this technique which we call additive synthesis, where we build up complex sounds uh, by adding together sine waves. In the middle here, you can see the score uh, at the top we see these blocks which represent time on the horizontal axis and frequency on the vertical axis. And the section at the bottom with the triangles represents amplitude or loudness on the vertical axis and time on the horizontal axis. Actually, you can see the time units shown in the middle of the screen uh, in the middle of that uh, score, if you can see my mouse pointer, they're actually measuring time in centimeters of tape on an analog tape recorder. Uh, this is how this uh, piece was made, by using these uh, sine wave oscillators, which were essentially uh, electronic test equipment rather than musical equipment, and recording the sounds onto an analog tape recorder, and then recording the results from one tape recorder to another and slowly building up the piece. Now, uh, a, a composer called uh, Georg, uh, George Haidu um, uh, created a Max MSP patch that simulates the uh, composition, so it, it displays the score going past and you can hear some of the sounds. I'm going to play some of that for you now from the Max patch.
okay, so that probably sounded pretty strange, uh, weird, uh, abstract, plinky-plonky kind of sound. This is uh, a sound from 1954, the very early days of electronic music. And you can see, uh, you can hear a sort of interest in these inharmonic, uh, unpitched sounds. So now we're going to jump forward... Okay, I'll just uh, pause that there. So this is jumping forward in time by about a uh, little over 20 years to the beginning of uh, digital sound synthesis. And this piece that we just heard, Stria, by the American composer John Chowning, was composed uh, using software that he wrote on, the, on a computer system at Stanford University using a programming language called the Stanford Artificial Intelligence Language. So they were doing artificial intelligence research way back in 1977. Anyway, uh, John Chowning invented a kind of digital synthesis called FM synthesis, frequency modulation synthesis, which some of you may have come across. And this technology was uh, commercialized and licensed in the instrument that we can see John Chowning playing there, which is uh, made by Yamaha. It's a very famous synthesizer called the Yamaha DX7. So once again, we hear these strange abstract sounds, but uh, interestingly, rather than brief uh, sound events that we hear in the Stockhausen piece, here we've got these slow, evolving, bright, rich, inharmonic textures. So uh, the two composers are doing something very similar, and this is kind of reflected in the way they've decided to score their works. Um, you can see... Uh, in Stockhausen's very painstakingly drawn out uh, a score using a kind of notation that he's created himself. Now Chowning, uh, Chowning sorry, jumping around the slides there, Chowning didn't uh, produce a score for this piece. This score is actually uh, created by uh, Charles Dodge, who wrote about this score in a book. Um, but similarly, you can see time on a horizontal axis and uh, blocks of sound represented as rectangles and the frequency spectrum represented on the uh, vertical axis. So we can definitely say that uh, Chowning is uh, composing sounds in a way that has not previously been done and uh, also taking those sounds and creating a large-scale sonic structure, which we would call a composition, um, and thereby, you know, composing with sound. So he's doing these, both composers are doing these two roles uh, at the same time. 
Okay, so jumping forward now to the world of uh, Max MSP to the present time, uh, I'll just show you a quick uh, piece of uh, work that I, I worked on last year with uh, my colleague Alex White. Now, some of you might be aware that uh, analog modular synthesizers have come back into fashion. So this is a form of analog synthesizer that uh, was developed in the 1960s and 70s. And uh, it's made up of modules that are connected together with patch cords. And you can see Alex there leaning over his modular synthesizer um, and lots of colorful patch cords connecting the modules together. So in this particular performance, we're taking the sounds from the analog uh, modular synth. We're feeding them into a, a musical software made with Max MSP, uh, a patch that I've made. It uh, takes, it records the sound in, and uh, then distributes it around eight loudspeakers, which are located around the audience. So the other things that you can see on the desk there, I've got my fingers on a MIDI controller. So this uh, this MIDI controller was, uh, uh, it's an Akai APC40, was designed for controlling uh, Ableton Live. But actually MIDI, which is the musical instrument digital interface, uh, can be used to control uh, elements inside the Max software. Max started its life as a programming environment for MIDI and eventually developed to be able to control audio and now video. So I'm using this uh, interface to control the patch that I've made to capture sounds and uh, play them back and move them around the uh, move them around the space around the audience. I'll play you a, a little example of this. <laughs> So you can see the Max patch there on the right. Uh, it's just a still image. Um, and interestingly, this sort of sound world that uh, this uh, piece is in is very reminiscent of the kind of plinky plonky sounds uh, that we just heard from Stockhausen and Chowning. Uh, there's a kind of revival of this interest in those old sounds uh, at the moment. So I'll just quickly show you a demonstration of a, a Max patch that's integrated into uh, what's called Max for Live. So you can make plugins for Ableton Live. Some of you will no doubt know about the Ableton Live uh, musical uh, digital audio workstation. Um, and uh, in this particular uh, plugin that I've made in Max, uh, it's using a a, an algorithm that uh, apportions uh, pulses uh, regularly and produces different kinds of rhythms.
Okay, uh, so it's a rhythm generator, and uh, if we just unlock one of these uh, plugins, uh, you'll see that it's a kind of crazy looking uh, patch with patch chords going between modules, and this is the way we create a patch or a program in Max MSP. And uh, as you can see, this can be applied as uh, as a tool for, in this case, generating MIDI events, which are then used to drive a drum machine. So this is just a stock uh, drum uh, plugin in in Ableton Live. So you can see the application of Max MSP comes right into contemporary music production, and uh, this is a rather cool little algorithm for generating uh, interesting uh, rhythms. Okay, so I'm aware that I've uh, introduced a whole lot of ideas and uh, lots of uh, jargon terms, complicated sounding terms to do with uh, electronic music that you might not have heard before. And one of the problems that we have in uh, teaching these some new concepts is that they can scare people off. And I want to reassure you that we're going to we're going to cover this material in quite a bit of detail as we go through and there'll be plenty of opportunities for you to ask for clarification. And uh, if you're feeling as though you're uh, in, a, in an area that you're not, uh, not comfortable with, um, please don't get anxious because uh, there's a lot of interesting stuff uh, that we're going to, a lot of creative stuff that we're going to do. It's not all weird plinky plonky sounds. Um, although there will be some <laughs> plinky plonky sounds, uh, so please don't get uh, don't get put off by the kind of techy language, um, and uh, don't get put off if it looks as though I'm assuming that you know a lot of things that you may not already know. Some of you will be miles ahead on this stuff. Uh, some of you, this is your first time for learning about MIDI interfaces and MIDI controllers and and uh, this this kind of stuff. So we want to learn about that as we go through. So that's what this subject is about. So now I'm going to get down to some of the nuts and bolts uh, of the delivery of the subject that we need to know about. Um, and uh, here's the subject description. The subject introduces the principles of sound creation and composition using electronic and digital processes. I've introduced some of those ideas to you uh, so far in this lecture. It provides a foundation for computational approaches to sound manipulation, enabling students to explore innovative approaches to sound synthesis, interactive systems, algorithmic and data-driven sound composition. So these are some ideas that are, you know, becoming more and more important in, in the contemporary music production world where music producers have to find their angle, their edge, and these are the kinds of tools that you can use to, to do that. Um, but there are also tools that are used in uh, some fairly far out uh, creative and artistic kind of endeavors as well. So it, it's a, it has the things that you're going to learn in the subject have application in lots of different areas. Issues in issues and current practices at the intersection of art, music and sound design are investigated, providing a context for students to develop their own creative sound works within the subject. So you're going to be making some sound and you're going to be doing some uh, creative work. So uh, there's a lot to look forward to. So uh, we're presenting our lectures this semester online. Uh, previously, they've been presented face to face. So we'll be doing those synchronously uh, at the scheduled time. Uh, and then there are 90 minute tutorials that we're doing face to face in the labs in building three. Uh, there's uh, material each week on UTS Online. Uh, if you had a look at the introduction video, you'll see I pointed out uh, links to some of that material. Make sure that you download the subject outline uh, from the from the UTS Online website. Uh, and there are we readings each week to kind of give you some background information about electronic music and uh, some of the ideas are relevant. Uh, you know, so you develop your literacy around this area as well. One of the ways that I, I try to keep you on track with the learning is uh, with quizzes that are online on UTS Online. And um, a lot of the kind of practical work that you'll be doing with Max, you'll be driving yourself and will be uh, picking up on the exercises that you've been doing each week in the tutorials. 
Let's uh, quickly just talk through the assessment tasks. Uh, your guide to this is really the uh, subject outline that you'll find on the website. Uh, there's three assessment tasks, uh, the quizzes that I've just described. So here we are in UTS Online and you'll see the weekly activities link gives us uh, weekly uh, folders for the content for each week and you'll see in week two we have the first uh, of our quizzes quiz number one uh, linked here so this is the material that you'll be looking at and uh, quiz number one is here and you'll see that quiz number one um, has a series of uh, questions and uh, each question is worth one point in terms of your grade for the subject second assessment task uh, we're going to work together to build a, a little instrument and we're going to play a little ensemble performance uh, in the class and uh, that happens in week five so by week five you will have the skills necessary to uh, to create uh, some sound and that's going to be a kind of abstract plinky plonky little uh, performance and uh, it's it's going to be very easy and it's fun fun to do uh, and then the final assessment task is where you get to create your own work and I'm going to team you up in pairs so you can share the load in terms of coming up with the ideas and coming up with the programming and uh, we're going to present those as in a set of sort of mini performances in the lab um, in weeks 11 and 12 so that's that's a lot of fun so three assessment tasks weekly quizzes uh, in weeks two to eight uh, an in-class uh, performance assessment in week five and then a performance of your own original composition in uh, week uh, 11 and 12. Okay, so here's a bit more detail on those. Um, you can see an example of a quiz question there uh, related to the reading uh, in week uh, week one. Uh, here's a little example of setting the lab up for um, uh, having all of the computers create sound simultaneously. Uh, let's just have a listen to this. You don't quite get the stereo effect. Uh, oh, with all the sound uh, around you in the space, it's quite a quite an interesting uh, experience. Um, I'll show you a video of last year's uh, last year's uh, in class performance. Okay, so you can see everybody concentrating very hard there in that uh, performance. Uh, so here's some more detail on that uh, assessment number two. Students create a simple performable software instrument patch implementing one sound synthesis method. So we're going to talk about sound synthesis. Uh, students will present and perform their instrument design in class and submit their patch file online. 
It's uh, worth 27% of the overall mark, and uh, it's uh, completed in week five. And you, you'll do a little improvised uh, performance with your instrument uh, before we get together and, and play our uh, ensemble piece. Uh, so you're marked in this uh, task uh, in terms of the design of the patch, the presentation and usability of the patch. So we'll be looking at how to create good patches. Uh, there'll be, uh, you, you, you will want to explore the range of different types of sounds that you can make with your patch. This is what range of morphologies. Morphologies is just a fancy word for sound shapes. Uh, and you'll provide an explanation of how the patch functions. So you'll have to understand what it is that you've done. And uh, you will have uh, prepared and, and rehearsed your, your little one-minute performance. It's a pretty low bar is set in this particular task. But that's what you'll be marked on. Uh, okay, so the final composition piece. Uh, here's the task description. Working in pairs, students will create an original max patch and presentation of a novel sound composition. Compositions may be presented as fixed works, interactive systems or performance systems. As well as uh, demonstrating technical proficiency, students are encouraged to make carefully considered choices regarding the presentation context. It's a kind of weird context because it's in the lab uh, and the experience of the audience. A single max patch is to be produced and presented by each pair of students. Each individual student will produce a separate written documentation that aims to integrate the theoretical, cultural and creative background uh, of their project idea with a report on the chosen forms, methods, materials and technical design employed in the project. So you're going to write a little essay about, about the work that you've done, a report rather than an essay. Uh, you'll submit the patch and document files for assessment. Uh, it's worth 45%, uh, so a little under half of the mark for the subject presented in weeks 11 and 12. Uh, it should go for about three minutes. Um, you'll notice it says demonstration for interactive systems. Some students made a, a, like a little musical performance. Some made a, a patches that um, worked with data uh, and displayed data in certain ways, and we'll be talking a little bit about that. Um, sonification it's called. So there's a whole lot of different approaches. Uh, some used video in their works. There's all sorts of different things that you can do with Max. Um, and once again a thousand word report. Uh, so same sort of marking arrangements on the patch itself. Uh, there's a mark for the quality of the composition, uh, a mark for the presentation of the work, mark for the writing, um, and uh, in both in terms of content and in terms of written expression. So that's it, we've got to the end and uh, I, I'll be here um, and I'll open up uh, the Zoom uh, meeting room and we, we can have some questions. Um, this is what we've done, we've introduced the concepts of composing with sound, uh, I've given you an overview of the assessment and uh, I started off by getting you to start thinking about different kinds of approaches to making sound and a uh, quick introduction to uh, Max, but we'll get into that in more detail in the tutorial. Okay, that's enough for the lecture. I'll uh, talk to you now on Zoom. Bye.